Welcome to Corporal's Corner. Today we're disinfecting water, so stick around. According to the CDC, or Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, there are five categories of water disinfection. For today's application, we will be discussing and demonstrating three of the five categories. These categories are as follows, heat, chemicals, and solar radiation. The CDC, or Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, has issued a five-page bulletin called personal preparation and storage of safe water. On page three of this five page bulletin, you'll notice it says, boiling is the surest method to make water safe to drink by killing disease causing organisms, including viruses, bacteria, and parasites. Moving down to the middle of page three of the five page bulletin, it states, Bring the clear water to a rolling boil for one minute. At elevations above 6,500 feet, boil for three minutes. The number one choice for disinfecting water should always be boiling. By simply bringing it to a rolling boil, it guarantees the elimination of viruses, bacteria, protozoa, and parasites. Pasteurization simply is a process of raising the temperature of a liquid to approximately 160 degrees for a period of 30 to 45 minutes. This can be done one of several ways. The CDC, or Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, has issued a five page document showing the guidelines of personal preparation and storage of safe water. On page four of this document, you will find detailed instructions on how to disinfect your water and make it safe for drinking using sodium hypochlorate between five and six percent. This documentation, however, has not been updated since all bleach manufacturers have gone to eight percent sodium hypochlorate. What you see in front of you right here is a Clorox bleach service bulletin dated January 31st, 2012. It's a 25 page document detailing how, when, and where to use the new sodium hypochlorite 8%. On page 21 of this 25 page guide, you will find a section titled For Emergency Disinfection of Drinking Water. Here you will find detailed instructions regarding the new sodium hypochlorite 8%. The new standard for disinfecting water using sodium hypochlorite at 8% is as follows. Two drops per quart for clear water and you wait 30 minutes. Three drops per quart for cloudy water and you wait 30 minutes. In either case, if you don't smell chlorine after 30 minutes, repeat the process. Due to the increase of germs, viruses, and antibiotic resistant bacteria, most bleach manufacturers have increased the sodium hypochlorite from 5% to 8%. Today, we will be using Clorox concentrated bleach. Once you have selected your bleach of choice, there's two things you should keep in mind. One is the shelf life. Once your bleach has been opened, it will roughly only work at 100% strength for one year and should be stored in a cool, dry, dark area. The second thing you need to keep in mind is your sodium hypochlorite percentage. Always ensure that it's 8%. A rolled up paper towel placed inside of a cap full of bleach can simulate an eyedropper.
once you have disinfected your water, simply place the lid back on and wait 30 minutes. Once you've determined that your water is good to go, crack the lid and dribble water over the threads. This will ensure that any pathogens on the rim or threads have been removed. The EPA, or Environmental Protection Agency, has issued a four-page document dated 2006 discussing various ways to disinfect your drinking water. On page three of this four-page document, it basically states to add five drops of 2% U.S. or your country's approved pharmacopoeia tincture of iodine to each quart or liter of clear water, or add 10 drops to cloudy water. In both cases, let it stand for 30 minutes. Tincture of iodine, 2%. Five drops per U.S. quart. Once you've disinfected your water using tincture of iodine, replace your lid and tighten it and wait 30 minutes. Again, just like with the sodium hypochlorite 8%, once your time frame is up 30 minutes, loosen your lid, dribble water across your threads, once again ensuring any pathogens on the rim or threads have been removed. According to the CDC, SOTUS or solar disinfection is the result of the combined effects of ultraviolet light, induced DNA damage, thermal inactivation, and photo oxidative destruction. All of these acting together inactivate disease causing organisms. They do not kill they inactivate them. The CDC also gives detailed information or instructions on how to properly perform the SOTUS method. Simply fill your plastic bottles, as in plastic soda bottles, preferably with low turbidity, Shake them vigorously back and forth or up and down to activate the oxygen inside the bottles. Then place the bottles on a roof or a rack for six hours if sunny or two days if cloudy. Once you have filled your bottles, vigorously shake them to activate the oxygen inside. Now simply place them in a location such as a rooftop, a rack, or in this case on top of an aluminum reflector for 6 hours in full sunlight or 48 hours in cloudy weather. The aluminum foil or aluminum reflector simply grabs the shortwave radiation that passes through the bottles and reflects it back through the bottle as longwave radiation. This will decrease the contact time or killing time and disinfect your water much faster. Remember, it is always good practice to strain your collected water prior to disinfecting or purifying it. Straining will remove large amounts of turbidity and debris, allowing your treatment method of choice to be that more effective. Straining is not filtering.
your collected water can be strained through a coffee filter, paper towel, cheesecloth, or even a 100% cotton unbleached bandana. Welcome back. That was a lot of information. Uh, believe me, I know because I'm the one who looked it up. Now, there's a couple things I want you to take away from this. The first one being, I want you to know the difference between disinfecting and purifying. It's two different types of animals. When you disinfect something, what you're doing is you're killing or making inactive the viruses, bacteria, protozoa, or parasites. Remember, they are inactive or they are killed. Now, filtration or purifying, which we didn't talk about today, is where you remove all the viruses, bacteria, protozoa, parasites, and chemicals, meaning pharmaceuticals or petroleum products. Second thing I want you to take away from this is I want you to know the difference between straining and filtration. When you strain something, you remove some of the debris and turbidity. The thread is still present and needs to be disinfected or purified. When you filter something, you remove all viruses, bacteria, protozoa, parasite, or chemical i.e. the threat has been removed. And third, and most importantly, there's exceptions to every rule. Each one of these examples I've shown today for disinfection, there's an exception to these rules. So I challenge you to look up every single one or the one that you're interested in and find out the exceptions. For example, if you have a thyroid condition, should you be using iodine? The answer should be no. So like everything else, hope you all learned something today. And with that, Catch you all next time.